Jets rookie quarterback Zach Wilson fails to pick up a first down in a key spot. So now Zach Wilson, Jets rookie quarterback, is getting picked apart by fans and media alike. I'm Glenn Norton with Jet Nation Radio and JetNation.com. Be sure to log into JetNation.com where you can register and become a part of what is the most active Jets message board on the web. So the Jets fall to Tom Brady and the Buccaneers 28-24 in an absolute heartbreaker. Brady throws a touchdown with just a few ticks left on the clock after the Jets fail to convert on a 4th and 2 earlier in the quarter when Zach Wilson decided to keep the ball on a fourth on the 4th fourth and 2 play, ran it to the right side. There was absolutely no room. The A-gap was closed. Wilson was stuffed. Robert Sala says after the game that it was on the coaches. Zach Wilson puts it on himself, says he made the call. He's the one who decided to make it a, make make the play his own, where you try to pick up the first, and the media and fans have let loose on the quarterback, saying that he's trying to play hero ball, he's trying to do too much, he's selfish, he's greedy, it was a stupid mistake, this, that, and the other. All I can say to that is give me a break. This is a kid, I don't know what fans were expecting out of Zach Wilson in year one, but I know what I expected, and I know what a, I do know what a lot of fans expected, and that was for Zach Wilson to come out of BYU, break into the NFL, and get better as the season went on. That is exactly what he has done. He made some fantastic throws today. All in all, a great game for Wilson, or at the very least, a very good game for Wilson. We did see some more drops from his receivers, but we saw Wilson completing passes off platform. We saw him getting rid of the ball quickly under pressure, getting the ball on target to his receivers despite having pressure in his face. We saw the multiple arm angles. Just all in all, a really nice job by Wilson today. Manages to put up a pretty solid performance when you consider, again, he's still missing his top three receivers. At one point, he loses George Fan for the rest of this game, and Chuma Adoga steps in at left tackle. He's missing his starting center. And listen, this is something I wanted to touch on because of the fact that even pre-COVID, even before the COVID outbreak, when we started seeing these injuries, the Elijah Moore going down, Corey Davis going down, multiple tight ends down at different times, O Lyman getting hurt, we were seeing all these things, and the there's this this cliche that we hear from fans all the time the the next man up next man up no excuses next man up now this makes perfect sense if you're in the huddle if you're in the locker room you're on that field that's the mentality players have to have they can't they know listen robert sala says it all the time you hear it from head coaches all, around the league constantly nobody in this league is going to feel sorry for you NFL players have to be ready to go, and when a guy gets hurt, the next guy has to step in, and you have to keep rolling forward as if nothing has changed. Because no one is going to feel sorry for you, no one is going to take it easy on you, and if you're going to win a football game, you're certainly not going to do it by going, oh man, we don't have so-and-so this week, we don't have that guy, we don't have this guy, oh, well, what the hell, we'll just mail this one in. You can't. Players, coaches, people, you know, all throughout the organization, next man up mantra, absolutely. Absolutely. However, as fans, as observers, as spectators, are you going to tell me with a straight face that expectations in terms of a team's performance or an individual's performance, especially a quarterback, expectations shouldn't change when guys get hurt? And there there will be some people out there still saying, yep, next man up, next man up. Listen. Let me put it to you this way. It's it's a yes or no question. And if you say yes, you're lying. We all know the truth here. But let's here's a hypothetical. Let's say you're out in Vegas. You're partying with your friends. You're out there, it's your, it's your best friends. It's his seventh wedding. Lucky seven. You're feeling good about it. You think, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go across the street and put in a bet this morning because I saw a line that I loved. And I'm not going to say a team, a team A, team B, whatever. See, I saw a line this morning that, that fantastic. I'm going to go put some money on that game. 
Matter of fact, I'm, I'm putting my whole bank account on that game. Because I've never seen a line that I like better in my life. And you're walking across the street to that bookie? Or what, what, what do they call them in Vegas? I don't even know. It's legal, casino, bookies. I don't know. I don't know if they call them good bookies out there. Anyway, I digress. So you walk across the street on your way over to the casino to place your bet. You hear on the news that the starting quarterback for the team you were going to put that money on and the starting running back, the workhorse running back who carries the ball 25 times a game for the team you were going to put that money on, the star wide receiver, maybe he's the best receiver in the league at that point, also plays for the team that you were going to put your money on, and the head coach, multiple coach of the year awards, a guy that you always has his team ready to go, you find out all four of them tested positive for COVID. None of them going to be there today. Quarterback, out. The backup quarterback, he had a contact too. He's out. Who's starting today? Undrafted free agent developmental guy who's been on the practice squad all season, has never thrown an NFL pass in his life. Running back, he's out. His backup, washed up journeyman on his last legs. You still making that bet? You still going to take that money and say, hey man, next man up. I, st I still have the same expectations that I had when I woke up this morning. I don't want to hear any excuses. It's next man up. That's what this league is about. No, you're a spectator. You're a fan. You're not a player. You're not on the field. You're watching the games. You're looking at the rosters. And you're basing your expectations based on who is on the field. That matters. For some reason, well, I don't. If it's the, the tough guy talk, everyone wants to feel like they're in the NFL. Played a couple snaps in high school, so I know what it's like. Next man up. No, no. When you lose Elijah Moore, when you lose Corey Davis, when you lose Jamison Crowder, when George Fant goes out with an injury, when you haven't had Mackay Becton all season, when Connor McGovern is out. When Michael Carter suffers a concussion early in the game. At some point, you've got to look at it and say, this quarterback is screwed. This quarterback's got nothing to work with. And this was what Zach Wilson dealt with today. And he went out there, and he did all right. Once again, didn't turn the ball over. Had himself touchdown pass, no picks. As I said, we saw multiple arm angles. We saw these easy throws that he struggled with just a few weeks ago. He's not struggling with those anymore. He's not perfect, but he's not. you're not cringing when the ball leaves his hand and asking yourself, what the hell just happened? You're not seeing him roll balls in front of receivers. You're not seeing him dirt balls yards away from receivers. He's cleaned up his game. He's improving. He's getting better. And it really seems like there are Jets fans out there. And I said this earlier in the year. Zach Wilson is the whipping boy for some fans who are fed up with the losing. Which I understand being fed up with the losing. I understand being fed up with the fact that this defense... How about, how about some heat for the defense today? People are killing rookie quarterback Zach Wilson for not converting on a fourth and two. Which was a dumb call. Don't get me wrong. But we're going to look, this defense allowed the offense to convert on a third and 20. This defense allowed the offense to march down the field on the final drive and score a touchdown with a few seconds left. And we're going to get on Zach Wilson, who's playing with backups everywhere. Everywhere. Offensive line, backups. Running backs, backups. All the receivers, backups. The tight ends, even the starters are backup caliber. And, and oh, by the way. They're playing the defending Super Bowl champions. Tom Brady on the other side of the field. Defending Super Bowl champs, rookie quarterback, goes toe-to-toe -to -toe and has a lead. His team has the lead with two minutes to go and the ball inside the opponent's 10-yard line. And the defense just lets them march down the field and score. And we're going to kill Zach Wilson for a blown quarterback sneak. This year was about development, 
This year's about Zach Wilson getting better as the season progresses. That has happened. And it's not even questionable. I see people who don't want to acknowledge it still killing the guy for every mistake he makes. And it's just... It's like it's like there are Jets fans who need a hug. Was it, was it Goodwill Hunting? That movie when uh, Matt Damon was like crying, blaming everything on whatever. And Robin Williams is like, it's not your fault, it's not your fault. And he's like pounding on his chest. That th- Some Jets fans need a hug. Not everything is Zach Wilson's fault. The last 10 years isn't not Zach Wilson's fault. Zach Wilson didn't bring Adam Gase in here. Zach Wilson didn't draft the players Mike McCagney drafted. Fans are upset. They're angry. The team sucks. They've sucked for a long time. I get it. But being mad at the, the young quarterback who's getting better and better every week, making fewer mistakes, making more accurate throws, better decisions when to run with the ball and when, when, when to throw, getting rid of the ball quicker, getting the ball on target more often, these are all the things you hope to see. And now as we're seeing it, there are some people who are looking for something to blame him for. Makes absolutely no sense. People have lost their minds with this stuff. But at the end of the day, for those of us who are who have managed to remain sane through this season, I think we're pretty happy. The kids coming around, the youngsters are playing well. Kenny Yaboa, first couple catches as a pro today. Michael Carter rips off a 55-yard run before he leaves with a concussion. Ty Johnson, Ty Johnson, listen, he had that game a few weeks back with all those drops, and that was tough to watch. But really, other than that game, we've not seen anything from him that would suggest that's going to be that he's not a guy that can be counted on out of the backfield. Now, I'm not saying he's Marshall Falk. I'm just saying the guy can catch the ball out of the backfield, and he can run it a little bit. So we saw that today. And as I said, we saw Yaboa make some plays. And Braxton Berrios. What more can you say about him? A couple more touchdowns today. One rushing, one receiving. Guy's been fantastic. He's been absolutely fantastic. You pencil him in, or you, you not pencil him in. You get him to sign with a pen on a new deal, hopefully in the near future. But you figure he's coming back next year. And Denzel Mims, not so much. Didn't play a snap today. So... All the talk last week from Robert Sala about how the book on Denzel Mims isn't written. Nobody's given up on him. Sure looked like they gave up on him today. And uh, one week left in the season. It's it's not looking good for Mims. But you know what? It is looking good for Wilson. It's looking good for Carter. It's looking good for AVT. Brandon Eccles, we saw another pick for him today. We saw Michael Carter make some plays. He picked up a sack. Foley Fadakasi, there's another guy you got to get signed. He looked good. C.J. Mosley has been much better of late. So there are some pieces in place here. Elijah Riley, had a, had a, you know, he, he makes his return. He looked good today. So some good young players in place. <clears throat> <coughs> Pardon me. And some, some reason for legitimate optimism. This team has played some really quali- high-quality football despite being down to second, third, and fourth stringers up and down the lines, in the secondary, at receiver, in the backfield, everywhere, everywhere. It's backups, and this team's competing. And Zach Wilson, more important, most importantly, is getting better. So you want to lose sleep over a QB sneak? You go right ahead. Personally, I'm going to be excited over the growth the kid has shown. Look forward to next week, and look forward to next season. That'll do it for this one. Take care, Jets fans. We'll catch you next week.